Hello everyone, my name is Saur and I just recently released my second game, a tactical battle puzzle game called Chambers of Devious Design. Everybody is always curious about how much money any game has made, so I figured that in this video I would share exactly how much money my game has made in one month. Alright, let's get started. Before I show you the actual sales numbers, I figured you might also be interested in knowing that I had around 4000 wishlist before I released the game. In case you're curious where all these wishlist came from, I'm actually planning on making my next video about all the marketing efforts for the game. So kind of like going through all the stuff I did and analyzing if it was worth it or not. Okay, let's move on to the most interesting part the actual sales numbers. Now I released my game on 5th of September this year. So let's put that as the first date and then 30 days from that. So by my math that would be the 5th of October. Let's see. Alright, so here we can see that during that 30 days I sold 1861 copies of the game and in case you're wondering what these copies here are they are basically copies that I gave away for free for example to creators and such then what that amounts to can be seen over here so selling all those copies made a gross revenue of $15,634 now right off the bat it's good to know that that is not the money that I get to keep myself. No, not by a long shot. There are still many pockets in line before me that the money will get distributed to. So yeah, I will go through the exact details in just a bit. In this view we can also see that during the first month I also over doubled my wishlist count since it was around 4000 before the release. So yeah. That's of course nice, so that will hopefully generate some future sales. Then let's start calculating how much of this money I get to actually keep myself. The first things you will need to take out of this sum are the returns, chargebacks and also taxes. And when I say taxes, I mean taxes that Steam will collect throughout the sales. <laughs> there are still other taxes that you will need to account for, but I will get to those later. Okay, so if we remove those three from this sum, what do we get? Well, we cannot see directly from here, but I actually calculated it based on the total amounts and I got this sum over here, so 11,000 and a bit over $700. So yeah, as you can see from the formula, I calculate that it, in my case, the net revenue that comes after removing those three is around 75% of the gross revenue. And this is actually unique to me because the amounts of returns and chargebacks and all this stuff can vary. And in my case, unfortunately, the returns are a bit higher than average. Uh, during the release they were something around 20%. Now it's a bit lower, but yeah. So is this the amount of money that I get to keep? No, <laughs> unfortunately not. Before chipping away the sum even more, I will do a quick bit of self-promo and mention that I recently started a Patreon for myself. If you would like to support what I do here on YouTube, there are some cool perks over there that you can redeem for yourself. For example, monthly updates on the sales numbers for both of my games. And just quickly, I would like to give a shout out to my new patrons. George Troublemaker. I remember seeing your comments on some of my older videos too. So thanks for the support and thanks for sticking around with the channel. I believe you're currently making your second game if I remember correctly. So best of luck with the project. You already the hard part of finishing your first game, so at this point nothing can stop you. The Seahorse, also a long time viewer of the channel and 
someone who has achieved the hardest part of releasing their first game. I remember reading that you recently got a dev job, so big congrats on that. Thanks to both of you for your support. Alright, so let's get back to that topic on hand and why I don't get to keep this sum of money for myself. So this here is what Steam calls the net revenue and this is used as a basis for the revenue split between me and Steam. The amount that Steam takes can differ a bit based on how popular game is, but for the vast majority of games that is 30%. I moved the numbers to Excel so it's a bit more clear and can see the whole picture at the same time. So yeah, so Steam takes 30%. And let's see what that is. So yeah, a bit over $8,000. So that's the amount of money that will get sent to my company. And I live in Finland and my bank account is in euros. So there's also the like currency conversion that you will need to account for. Like currently the dollar is very strong when compared to euros so in some sense i'm actually losing money because the dollar will get converted to euros when it hits my company's bank account it might actually make sense to make a separate bank account for dollars so you can kind of like <laughs> mess with the currency conversions a bit but yeah that's completely another topic so let's not go into that and for the sake of simplicity i just Stick to the dollars and kind of like count the amounts with this amount and not worry about euros at all. Alright, so this amount, do I get to keep that? No. <laughs> That's kind of the trend here. It's never the amount that you get to keep. I actually also need to spend money to make the game. For example, the graphics and uh, one of the biggest ones was translations so yeah let's take all of that into account also and I actually have the total number calculated over here so that was seven thousand four hundred and thirty four dollars so yeah let's just input that over here let's see what we get left up left up with and that's company profit so yeah, as you can see, in 30 days, luckily I am on the plus side. I haven't lost money with the game, but it's good to note that the deduction I made here, that, that, that does not include the hours I spent developing the game. And that is not a small concern, so I actually have all the numbers for that also so let's see maybe we could calculate the profit per hour let's see so we will divide that by the number of hours I spent developing the game which is 1748 hours so yeah that's a meager 44 cents per every hour I spent not quite such a good hourly wage, I would say. But of course it's good to know that this is for one month, so of course my game will keep on selling and the number of hours will not go up by very much at least. It will go up a bit because I will still put out an update or two, I think, but yeah. Of course, one thing good to note, so is this the amount I get to keep? No. You see, this is the amount of profit my company has made. So, uh, while I own the company, in a sense I'm just an employee of the company. So, in any case, there are still taxes that need to be paid in my country. Those will vary a lot based on many different variables, like how much profit my company is making, how big of a salary I want to withdraw from my company, and yeah, 
things like that for the sake of simplicity and since this is quite a small amount I would say overall also while accounting for the profit I will make for my first game I think the total tax burden in my country for this amount will be something like 10% maybe even a bit less since <laughs> these sums are so small in the end but yeah let's go with the 10% I think that's relatively close to the truth I would say so yeah that is actually the personal profit amount that I will at least theoretically make from the first month sales and just to tease ourselves let's also update this to the <laughs> lower value so it's the actual truth so yeah 40 cents for every hour so far you might also be interested in knowing what I think of these numbers so let me share my thoughts on that in some of my previous videos I think I mentioned that the sales were not super good but they were not super bad either so just like okay and I don't want to sound too ungrateful because selling over 15,000 in gross revenue during the first month is not bad by any means but in my case it's not really kind of good enough in a sense either I mean I will not be selling this amount every month usually with games the sales are very front-loaded so to say that the release will generate a lot of the revenue that you will get over the years uh, of course that's different for every game some will maybe get like this huge discount sales or peaks of popularity but usually the release is a large amount of the total sales over the game's lifetime if you look at the sales chart so you can see what I'm talking about kind of like on the first day there were a, a lot of sales but then it just do -do 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 started going down quite quickly a bit too quickly <laughs> I would say I can't help but comparing this to my first game Mortal Glory so with that one I believe the sales chart went kind of like straight <laughs> up I mean like do -do -do -do. Uh, during the first few days it, the sales amounts increased because it was gaining more visibility and it, it was also received better and more creators played it and things like that so yeah if you haven't seen any like this revenue videos about my first game I actually have a few on the channel so feel free to check those out if you want to compare but yeah if my second game was my first game I think I would be very happy with the result I got here but since it is not my first game I can't help but comparing that okay with my first game I use something like 1000 hours or actually more than that in total because I kept updating it uh, something like 1600 I think was the total amount and I only spent something like a bit over $3000 developing the game so yeah, the profit margin on my first game was a lot, lot bigger. And also one very important note is that I actually had a full-time office job when I made the first game. And yeah, so it was very nice to see that the, despite that the game was so successful. But now I am a full-time indie game developer, so I kind of have to rely on the income from my games unlike previously so yeah considering that the sales for my second game were a bit disappointing I mean there's not really so much salary I can pay for myself with this profit per hour amount over here but yeah luckily it will keep going up as the game sales over the months I don't think it will be a huge amount but still some and I will still keep making games and I think there's also some synergy benefits as you have more games so 
whenever I release a game, hopefully it will be successful and then people might start to think like, okay cool, I like this game from this developer, so maybe I'll go check the other games from that developer, so I think I will get some some sales thanks to that also. I don't know really how much and how significant it will be, but still some. One thing that might also be interesting to look at is this sheet over here. So in case you didn't see, I made a video on my channel a bit before the release about how much I was estimating and hoping the game would sell. So these numbers are kind of like based on the common average values for games using the wishlist amount. So kind of like projecting sales based on the wishlist amount based on how other games have done. So in the estimation video I categorized the different scenarios about how much my game was expected to sell and if I would be happy with that or not. So let's see, these values over here are based on the first week net dollars, so let's check that. So the gross revenue of sales during one week was around $11,000 and yeah, I just round that up to 11,000 for the sake of simplicity and to get the net revenue of that number we will use the value I calculated before the 75% to get the net revenue. Then let's go back to the sheet and actually before I use this number over here I check the values over here and in this sheet the net actually also accounts for the steam cut so actually I the value I have here I still need to take 30% out of that so let's see 70% so okay so that's 5000 and around 800 so yeah as we can see it's kind of a bit over the meh category I was hoping I would be able to reach the okay but yeah not based on this and actually the meh category is actually my own term for the category the conversion value 0.2 that's actually the average that is mentioned here so so yeah while it says meh here I can't really be like too disappointed because it's still the like average result based on this sheet and while I was hoping to reach the higher tiers it's yeah it is what it is so let's see uh, so this would say that I would get around 29,000 of net revenue over three years which is not that bad and my value was a bit over that so let's see what that would mean in terms of profit per hour so was it something like I think 1730 hours I spent on the game so that would mean 17 dollars of net revenue so actually profit for my company I mean it's not super bad but it's not really super good either considering all the factors and how much work and how challenging it can be to actually make and finish and release a game. And before we wrap up, I thought it would be interesting for you to also get a look at the different region distributions in regarding the sales. So in here you can see the first month sales, so US is number one over there, then China number two, so I had a Chinese localization in the game, a very good quality one, I would say, at least I was happy with the result. And in total I had 12 languages in the game, so quite well localized, I would say. And yeah, Germany number three, then France, Korea, and then Argentina is a bit sus actually uh, well you can google what says from Argentina or Turkey mean 
I'm not gonna dwell too deep into those, but yeah, you might just say that all of these people from Argentina or Turkey, the says, might not actually be from those countries. All right, I think that pretty much wraps up all the stuff I wanted to say in this video. And as mentioned before, I am planning on making a video about all the marketing efforts I did for the game. I think that might have some interesting insights for you, even though the game didn't do super great. And yeah, speaking of that, in case you didn't see my previous videos, I actually have a video about the idea, kind of analyzing why it might not have been the best idea, and then also about the dev process, kind of like going through what was difficult along the way and stuff like that. But yeah, that was pretty much everything, so thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, please click the like button, and also I would love to see your comments below, what you think about the numbers, and if not about that, then maybe just give some algorithm food for the video, and yeah. Alright, hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.